you struggle with a messy home, you are not lazy. In fact, most people who struggle with a really messy space are perfectionists. And the reason that they have a messy space is because they're trying way too hard. There are really three main reasons why your house looks wrecked a lot of the time. And it's because you are doing way too much. You are expecting way too much and you have way too much. But the first one, the do too much is key because let me tell you something, most people who struggle with a messy home, they're not doing anything a little bit. They are extra at everything. If they're cleaning the house, they are scrubbing walls, they are moving furniture, they are going all in. And it's so much work and it's so much like time consuming crazy pantsness that that's why you're procrastinating. That's why you're putting it off. You are making mountains out of molehills because you want to do it right. If you're going to do it, I'm going to do it right. And so here's the honest truth. Because you're so extra and you're working so hard, you will never, ever, ever have enough time to do it the way you want. And you will continue to procrastinate. So the secret, honestly, is doing things badly giving yourself permission to suck at it. If you notice dirt on the floor, you don't have to vacuum your entire house. You can just do that one little section. If you have a ton of laundry that has to get put away, you don't have to like fold everything like Marie Kondo, super perfect and like make your drawers look amazeballs. Just shove those tea towels in your kitchen drawer without folding. No one's gonna see your pajamas. It's fine that they're wrinkly. Stop, stop working more than you need to in the spaces that honestly don't matter. You don't need to wash your walls. You don't need to wash your curtains. You don't need to move things when you're dusting. You can take shortcuts. You can cheat on the things in life that honestly don't matter because that's the secret of how you get things done. It's not everything all at once. It's small micro projects 15 minutes at a time. You don't take everything out when you organize your space and like trash your kitchen. You do one drawer or one shelf. And I know this goes against everything that you've probably been taught is right. In school, they're like, make sure you try hard on everything. Work hard on that boring essay about World War II that nobody gives a crap about. But in real life, we have jobs and kids and families and stuff to do. And guess what? Netflix is more important than doing everything the hard way. It's not a video game. We don't get bonus points. We just have to get it done. Seriously, done today is better than perfect tomorrow. And I promise you, if you start like doing things crappier, but still doing them, you're gonna take pressure off yourself and you're actually gonna be amazed at how much cleaner and tidier your house is. The second reason your house feels like it's messy all the time is because you expect way too much. And what I mean by this is the expectations you put on yourself are ridiculously way too high. First of all, you expect that when you clean your house, it's gonna stay that way or that it's supposed to look magazine perfect all the time. But even more than that, there's expectations like you're gonna finish all the projects that you started. You're gonna make that scrapbook, finish that quilt, fix that broken vacuum, paint that dresser that you've told yourself you're going to do. All of these things add up, all of these expectations add up to pressure and they make you feel like a failure. And if you feel like a failure, you're not gonna wanna get started in the first place. So it's this vicious cycle of extremely high expectations you've put on yourself and it's also you never living up to that fantasy. Sometimes we also expect too much of our loved ones, like our spouse and our kids. We expect them to clean when we want it to be clean, or we expect them to care as much as we do, or notice the dirt and mess like we do. And all of these expectations lead to resentment and a hatred of housework. That's the truth. You hate housework. And so here's the secret lower those expectations. Drop them to the floor, friends. My expectations of what I can accomplish in a day are three things. Dishes, one load of laundry, and a 10-minute tidy up, and that's it. That's all I expect to get done in a day. And because my expectations are so low, it feels like attainable. I'm actually motivated to do those things because I'm not putting a lot of pressure on myself. And 
I always go above and beyond because I'm proud of myself for getting those three things done. So when you actually lower your expectations, give yourself like non-negotiable things that you have to do, but not make it crazy unrealistic, you are going to get way more done and you will stop struggling with a messy home. The final reason why your house feels like it's always messy is because you have way too much stuff. I'm just serving you up a dish of cold hard truth here. You have way too much stuff and that's why it's not manageable. Let's talk about your clutter threshold and everybody's clutter threshold is different. Basically, it's the amount of stuff that you can have in your home that you're able to easily manage, keep track of, and put away. And you know you're over your clutter threshold if you can't tidy a room in under 10 minutes. If it takes you longer than 10 minutes to put things away, you have way too much stuff. Sorry. But I feel like this is the easiest thing to overcome because all you have to do is get stuff out the door. That's just fill trash bags and, and boxes of donations. And we don't have to worry about things that you like, special things or sentimental things. It's literally the crap you forgot you owned in the back of your closet, in the bottom of your kitchen cabinets. If you're not using it, you can let it go to make room for all the things that are all over your surfaces. Here's how to declutter super fast without stress and without making a bigger mess. Just hunt for things that can go. So set a timer for 15 minutes, grab a box, a cardboard box and a bag, and just run around your house looking for things that you're not using. Look for trash, look for empty boxes, look for obvious things that can leave your house. And the second thing that you can do is grab a memory bin. So get yourself a big tote and dedicate this for special memories because when your special things like photos or maybe, I don't know, important documents are mixed in with random clutter, everything now feels important. You can't just grab a trash bag and start throwing things out randomly because there's good stuff in there. So giving yourself a memory bin and having it with you while you're decluttering means when you come across something special, you can immediately just toss it into your memory bin and that's gonna help you let go of all the other things that aren't as special. You probably have a bunch of stuff that doesn't actually have a place to go though. Like how can I clean up Cass when there's no place for these things to go? The secret here is just create a good enough home. Where would you look for it first and shove it there? You don't have to organize that space right now. You just have to give it a space and like put it in there. And if it doesn't fit, what can leave to make room for that item that you actually use? The final step of really decluttering and organizing is to make sure you're not fine-tuning your spaces. What I mean by that is don't worry about organizing them, just literally shove them or messily macro-organize them to start because you don't do that final organize until the whole space is decluttered because I guarantee you're going to find more things. You're going to have to move things around and, and kind of adapt your space. So now you have to undo the work you've done with that micro-organization. So we just we just go through our house like a little tornado, make it good enough for now. You can always go back and make it perfect later. If you made it to this point in the video, I think you're seeing a trend. Basically what I'm telling you is be crappier. All around, just give yourself permission to suck a little bit because it is that perfectionist mindset that's making you fail. It's that thought process of if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it right. And I'm going to do all these amazing things all at once. That's setting you up for like extreme failure, disappointment. And that leads to procrastination and perfection paralysis is a real thing, friends. So give yourself permission to suck. That's I could have just I could have just said that one thing in this whole give yourself permission to suck because when you take the pressure off yourself and you take those shortcuts amazing things happen you feel motivated you feel proud of yourself you actually get way more done because you're not overworking yourself and putting so much pressure on yourself magical things happen when you suck a little bit I'll see you guys next time Hey guys, thanks so much for those of you who have stayed to the end. I have an awesome sauce announcement. Clutterbug Help is now open for business, except it's not business. 
I am offering free organizing and decluttering coaching and a little makeover of your space virtually. I'm not coming to you, but we are going to chat through Zoom and make over your space together. And if this interests you and you're like, hex, yeah, I want to do this, here's how you apply. Grab your phone and make sure you turn it this way. And just give me a little video telling me about yourself and then show me the space that you want to make over. Please, please make sure you're as still as possible because a lot of this, I get motion sickness and I might yak. And also, please try to keep the video to under three minutes total. Once you're done, you can email it to makeover at clutterbug. Dot com. If your video is a little bit big for email, you can use Dropbox or Google Drive, I don't know, things to transfer the document over. And then Emily and I will take a look at all the submissions and we'll get back to you. Another disclaimer, the makeover we're probably going to be posting on YouTube. So make sure you're comfortable being on camera and showing your space on camera but you don't have to tell me where you live and give your address for the weirdo stalkers, but you're getting the idea. And we can kind of recreate the first season of Hot Mess House together. Sounds fun. I'm excited. I can't wait to see your submissions and I, I'll see you guys next time.